Zero one, I can put oh. the rest back and then draw up to a seven card hand. Ross, on the left hand side, I am seeing Amber Amethyst. Ooh. Super rare um, card um, ink pairing. I imagine that's going to imply that this is a hyper aggro deck. Typically, that's how these decks go. Uh, a shout out, though, to um, a previous DLC in North America. I can't remember which one, but the winner was um, Am 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 Amber Amethyst Mufasa, which was super cool. But yeah, from what I've seen in Luigi's hand, here, I do believe this is going to be hyper aggro, which I actually think there, there, there is a space for hyper aggro in the meta at the moment because so many decks are super slow these days, and I think hyper aggro could absolutely um, uh, the, the, do the business <laughs> here today. Yeah, and look, I said I wanted hyper aggro, all right? I said I wanted hyper aggro, and if we're getting it, that's good for me. Looks like we are inking a Robin Hood and playing a Robin Hood. He is apparently on the mart. I see Piglet, I I see blue, and I tell you what, as a player who loves hyper aggro, they are cards I love. China Box followers, it is confirmed. It is Amethyst Amber from Luigi here, and we do see a Lilo coming down. That's a perfect turn one card for hyper aggro. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's it is Emerald Steel on the right. Sorry to interrupt you. No, there. no, of course, no, of course, of course, no. Lilo, a fantastic opening, uh, one drop uninkable, um, one one stat line, questing for two. So not there to be a really a board presence. It's not going to do much in terms of challenging or even being challenged but just that aggro strategy just get to 20 as quick as possible we see marco throwing down the two drop ursula deceiver and luigi is going to throw down the hand and reveal it no songs which can't feel good for marco um although we did see that location near uh, these one four um one passive law gain it's from peter pan i believe i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head i'll get that information but uh, a generic location just to get some passive law gain yeah, always nice to get a bit of passive law gain from those locations because, you know, why, why, why quest for law when you can just get it naturally? You know what? That sounds all right by me. Got that and we, Arthur there. Yeah, we got Arthur, we got Piglet, we got Chernobyl followers going and getting inked. We've got a lot of cards that we would generally expect to have as... You know, in these hyper aggro decks, Piglet comes down. As soon as you have two other characters down, Piglet becomes great at questing. For sure, for sure. And anyone at home that may be a newer player thinking, oh, why did why did Luigi quest with the um, with the Lilo? Because then it would immediately be taken out, and then this Piglet very unlikely to be questing for three on the next turn. And maybe Luigi wants to find a way to get a safer questing turn off with this Lilo. But it makes sense to absolutely at least wait until turn three so that you can get the full um, the full business with Piglet. Marco is going to shift that Robin Hood champion of Sherwood uh, a staple of the format super strong card good singer good stat line questing for two and he's going to do just that and quest up to two yeah, not bad, but Luigi, if Luigi's got a decent character here, then we're going to be seeing questing for five on Luigi's turn, and then basically forcing Marco to have to answer some of these aggro cards. Piglet turn two after a Lilo turn one is very nice. That is pretty much what you're looking for here. What does turn three hold for Luigi? I want to say, and we do see that, I believe that is Neverland. Neverland, That is not an one. English kept, version I, of the card. There you go. I, keep, I kept wanting to say Peter Pan, but I couldn't... I couldn't get to the name. But yes, Neverland, just a really cheap location to be another threat that the opponent cannot ignore and is going to gain lore. We're going to get the blue down. Oh, um, I love blue. Yeah, so this is it. This is another reason why it was super good for Luigi to not quest with the Lilo. On top of the fact that this Piglet has now just quested for three, a total of five lore on the board now for Luigi, this bodyguard blue is going to protect that Lilo. Of course, not completely. The Robin Hood can take out the blue. Uh, Luigi will gain two lore, cuts the effect of blue. But then this Ursa Deceiver will be able to take out the Lilo, but at the end of the day, you're hyper aggro. You just want to get to 20 as quick as possible, and this is a really nice start from Luigi. However, Marco, this Emerald Steel deck has access to a lot of cards oh. just like that. Let the storm rage on, and you've got to imagine there's probably not necessarily always, but most Emerald Steel players will be playing a copy or two of Grab Your Swords. Yeah, and Grab Your Swords can be devastating against these hyper aggro decks. So let the storm rage on takes out Piglet. Of course, Baloo there with Bodyguard. Any challenge? has to go into Baloo first, but if Baloo gets banished, that's an extra two law for you, which is, it's my favorite. It's uninkable, but that is not like the only downside of Baloo. It is a phenomenal card. Here comes Diablo. That's going to be a draw engine. 
Yeah, this blue um, raising in popularity since the Disney Locana, Locana Challenge in Fort Worth, where the second place finish was running Steel Song and really utilizing these balloons. And I think they won their top four game by using a Long Came Zeus on their own balloon. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, nice, nice card. And again, um, synergizes with the aggro theme of our deck. We also see that Donald Duck in the hand that we mentioned earlier while we were putting some cards that gives extra lore to a character. I think that's a Donald Duck. There's probably one in there at the very least. We're going to ink that Neverland. Don't need it yet. Uh, that one can come in later. Oh, Arthur, I like when you quest, you get to bump one of your own characters back to your hand, but gain extra lore for doing so, which can be really good with, for instance, Merlin Goat, or even just for, you know, questing with someone like a Lilo and then bumping it back to your hand so you can replay it, but it's not exerted, so it can't be challenged. Yep, and there's Lilo still on the board. It seems the Robin Hood did not take out the Baloo on the previous turn. Um, so, yeah, still a lot of pressure on Luigi's side of the board. Of course, the Lilo quest for two, the Baloo quest for one, but it also represents another two lore when it's banished. But, yeah, this Arthur, good at protecting characters and really nice boosts to, um, to our lore. Yeah, that's and what you I think this is the moment where we're going to see the Lilo gone. Yeah, Ursula is exerting here. Looks like we are going to challenge into the Lilo. Lilo goes away, but you know what? You've gained a bunch of lore nice and early. That is a very good start. It's not a card you expect to stay on the board. If you can quest once with it, it's great. Two is phenomenal. Arthur, I love Arthur. I've played it in a bunch of decks, mm -hmm. but Strength of a Raging Fire took it straight out, and this is my problem with playing Arthur. So many times it never ends up doing any Anything because it is such a good card, it becomes an immediate target. Just a quick mention, Marco drawing there at the same time as Luigi because he has the Diablo down, which allows him to draw during the opponent's turn whenever they draw. So just clearing up why Marco drew there. But yeah, Luigi with this really heavy, uh, nice, heavy, um, quick start already at 11 lore. But this is the problem with the hyper aggro deck. You can really run out of cards quickly. And I think Marco has a bit of a better board count. Definitely, sorry, card count definitely has the more oppressive board. We do see a goat on the board, but it's not going to stick around for a long came Zeus. He held his Thunderbolt and sent that goat straight to the discard. Although that's a, that is another law for Luigi, but he's at 12. Does he have the resources to get the rest of the way? And this is the problem. I'm not, I'm nervous if I'm Luigi at this point. 12 law is nice, but with nothing on the board, questing, you're in a part of the game where questing is going to be awkward because your opponent is going to be trying to answer the characters as they come down. You need to really be playing two, three, four characters at once, but you don't yeah. really have the hand for that. Or you need to take advantage of things like Merlin Goat or, you know, your, your locations where you can get you passive lore. But the problem is that you're not necessarily close enough to goat to the finish, which is a, a verb I'm just coining right now. Pinocchio and Wendy Darling, nice little combination. I adore Pinocchio. Mm -hmm. But Pinocchio is another card that, like, I played you with this at a set championships, and you never let me use it. Because I was using my own Pinocchio, the yeah. one that exerts. <laughs> it was horrible. I did not enjoy that game. I'm sorry, Rod. You got your stitch, though. I so it, it, it wasn't the end of the world. We're, there is that strength for a raging fire, as you mentioned. Well, um, I mean, it doesn't stay on. This is my problem with hyper aggro. <laughs> you get to this point of the game, and every card you play, your opponent just goes, nah, mate. Nah, mate. <laughs> You're not doing that. And this is the problem of Luigi with this huge head start already at 12 law, but only two cards in hand. Not a lot they could do. I think one of them is a pick Piglet, and one of them is, uh, unless the piglet just went down, there is a fox in hand, but we would need to play a character first to rebounce it. And Marco here is holding a copy of We Don't Talk About Bruno, which is going to be a nice answer if Luigi does get something down on the board, which Marco is a little scared of. Let's just bounce it back to your hand and potentially even discard it. And the thing is, Marco's he sitting on, I think, six lore on the board just from questing, and Luigi's putting very, very little pressure onto the board. There's no songs or actions coming down. There's no characters there to challenge. So Marco is just going to be able to challenge and win in two turns from here. Yeah, unfortunately, this, this can be the problem with Hyper Aggro. Great start, but you just run out of cards so quick because your, your characters generally aren't trading with the opponent. Even if they do challenge, you tend to have such low strength. So, yeah, a bit of a picky situation for Luigi, but yeah, that Keeda in there, we mentioned not long ago the legendary one, the five-cost Inkable in combination with Under the Sea. In this particular deck, it's just there to say, hey, I've got a nice big board, I'm going to put down key 
leader, lower the strength of everything by three, and then I'm going to have a safe questing turn, and you're not going to be able to deal with my board. But in this instance, not doing much for Luigi. We're going to see the Ursa Deceiver trading into the Madame Min Fox to remove it from the board. Everything's going to quest up. That Diablo exerted, of course, offering a constant threat of um, allowing additional card draw whenever the opponent draws. So Luigi's going to uh, draw here, and Marco is going to draw in turn. Yeah, Marco needed two more Lord down there in order to have game on board for next turn. Wasn't able to do it. Can go up to 18 next turn. But it doesn't even matter. Luigi goes, no, I'm sorry, Marco. You're too close to winning here. It does seem like we are going to be going to game two. And I believe that is Marco winning game one with a Luigi concession. Because unfortunately, Marco just had too good of a board. Yeah, Marco just seemed to have everything there very early on. He had the Ursa Deceiver, which didn't hit a song, but at least allowed him to... Uh, have a look at the hand and get some information know what was going on. Was able to get down this Ursa Deceiver of Alls. That can, of course, double sing. We see a Storm. We see a Strength. And, yeah, just a high aggro player. Really nice head start, but just wasn't able to keep up that board control. Just didn't have the resources for it. No, unfortunately not able to get there. And that was, and that, that, that I think what we saw there was hyper aggro in a nutshell. It is an archetype that I'm constantly playing around with. I love it. But as I was saying to, to, to Joe in the previous game, there's so many games I've lost at 16, 17, 18 ink because you just get close enough, but you can't get over the finish line. You yep. run out to a big lead. What you really need is to be left alone for a couple of yes. turns. Yes, just leave me alone. If you can let me put down my Pinocchios, don't interrupt them. Don't play your own Pinocchio that exerts. Don't play a Storm. Don't go grab Sword. Just let me cook. But unfortunately, that is not how it went in this particular game. But this time round, um, they're definitely going to be hoping for a better start. Maybe utilize that Arthur so that we can protect our characters as well as gaining lore. I'm not sure what other card draw options are in the deck. Sometimes you'll see Merlin Rabbits in this Amethyst deck just to be a bit of extra card draw. But not always because, again, it's a four-cost uninkable. And this deck already runs an awful lot of uninkable cards. Yeah, you're playing a lot of cards to give you an almost unfair amount of lore. You know, Lilo, your one cost of quest for two. Your Pinocchio, your two cost of quest for three. Your Baloo, that's a bodyguard that gains two lore when it's banished. All of these are uninkable because they're too good to be inkable. If they were inkable, then Ravensburger would have to do something else to lower the power level of the card because oh. they're literally too good. Also, we get confirmation here. Both players did win their round one, two games to zero. Yeah, love this screen. Um, again, a shout out to our production team, constantly raising the... Uh, raising the, the level, the scale, however you want to put it, making everything better for these events. And yeah, we see Luigi in their inks and Marco with theirs, both on seven points. Again, if you're a newer player, um, the point system essentially is... Marco's already on 10 now. He's already... On, well, well, yeah, yeah, technically, <laughs> but that won't go through to the game ends. Oh, I know, I know. But yeah, when you're playing these to this two-game format, you get three points for every win. But if you win two games in a row, if you are able to 2-0 your opponent, then you get one bonus point. So both of these players clearly went two in their first round. That's why they're at seven, and that's why they are here on the feature match for round two. So Luigi has shown that his aggro deck can absolutely, oh, absolutely. come through and just 2 0 the opponent. Um, who's going to be going first here will be a big decider in this game. If Luigi is going first, which I believe he is. So we're going to ink that Wendy Darling, two cost inkable, one three quest for two, and down comes that Lilo, just like the previous game. But the difference here is Luigi, because they're playing that Amethyst package, maybe they have a Merlin Snake, which would allow them to quest with the Lilo, bounce it back to their hand to protect it and then this snake obviously offering some board presence because again you are an aggro deck but it you, it still runs the snakes and the foxes which as well as protecting characters because of the bounce can give you a little bit of board control marco's going to ink and down comes robin hood yeah and this game very important if marco wins this game is actually worth four points for luigi would much rather get three points than zero luigi cannot get seven points on this match can still get three so it looks like potentially inking a second wendy darling all Ready. Both of them have now hit the inkwell, and we are playing a Maleficent Ooh. and another Lilo. Okay, if this works, that is six law next term. Yep. This is exactly, a Maleficent is Lilo, it's just in, in Amethyst. Exactly yes. the same stat line, same card. And what do we... <laughs> and one of the reasons you play the, the Amethyst Amber is so you can play both of these cards together. That is why these inks work well together. And this is what you're looking for. And if you're Marco, you're like, mate, slow down. Mm -hmm. Luigi's like, no, I'm turbo. This is literally what my deck does. This is what I do. Yeah, that is a lot of gas. And ooh. why are you going first is so huge. Ah, so we're going to see an ink from Marco. They don't challenge the Lilo. 
I'm sure they've got a game plan in mind, but that is going to allow Luigi a big questing turn here. And with that three ink, but to, could potentially put down a fox or still the snake. Oh, instead we're going to see Donald Duck Musketeer oh, come yeah. down. He is going to give plus one lore to that Lilo. So that Lilo is now questing for three up to five. We're getting another four lore out of the other two characters, bringing us up to nine. And this Donald Duck, uh, yeah, enters play exerted. Yeah, because it is a bodyguard. So Marco will be forced to challenge this Donald Duck, who Robin Hood can't deal with, unfortunately. And yeah, it's, I, I think this is a really nice start for Luigi. This is a completely different game, right? This is why going first is so huge as aggro. Getting your Lilo turn one, Lilo Maleficent turn two into a bodyguard turn three. It's just about the best possible start for this style of deck. It is phenomenal. Now, Marco does get the bigger Robin Hood, the Floodborn Robin Hood, but as it stands at the moment, there are a lot of characters to take out, and it's fine if you take out one of these characters. It's, it's fine. You don't need to get seven lore next turn. No. Just get five. <laughs> and then you're six lore just, away from five, Just five will do. That's fine. All strength of a raging fire has just come down and taken out the Donald Duck, which is very, very important. Although, I'll tell you what, that is a card which, you know, it ramps up in terms of how many characters you've got on the board. Not the most efficient use of it. Did get rid of the Donald Duck, but didn't get rid of any of the questers. Luigi's going to 15 lore this turn. It's only turn four. <gasps> and Baloo has a body. I'm getting excited, I Baker. Know, I, I, I'm, exciting. I'm right there with you, buddy. This is incredible gas. Yeah, Marco um, wanted to challenge the Lilo, but couldn't because of the bodyguard Donald. So playing the strength of a raging fire, super interesting. And passing back to Luigi, who, as you said, big aggro questing turn, and that Baloo is representing another two lore. Marco's got to do a lot now to catch up. We do see a Let the Storm Rage on, so that is going to hopefully, um, that will help a little bit with taking some of the pressure off the board, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough at this point. We can probably remove two of these small characters, but then we're questing for three next turn with Lilo and Baloo taking us up to 17, sorry, to 18, uh, and, yeah, you, and then the Baloo would be it. That, that's yeah. it. Marco can't do it. It shakes the hand. You don't even quest with Baloo. You use Baloo to challenge Robin Hood, and yeah, then yeah, it goes yeah, away yeah, and yeah, you yeah, gain just, two lore rather than one. Yeah, just, so quick 